we thought we were coming to a party, you know, and then instead it was a race riot. Juanita Mitchell was seven years old when she moved to Chicago with her mother and sister in July of 1919. She's now 107 and still remembers how the city erupted in violence a century ago. I can hear my uncle saying, here they come. And when he said, here they come, it meant the white folks were coming down the street. And it was something. The riots were sparked by the stoning and drowning death of Eugene Williams, a black teen swimming in Lake Michigan who drifted toward the unofficial white section of the beach. What followed was one of Chicago's most violent weeks in its history. White mobs raided black neighborhoods on the city's south side, burning homes and beating people. Black residents fought back with fists and gunfire. 38 people died, 23 black and 15 white, and more than 500 people were injured. Hundreds of black families were left homeless. I'll never forget it. We were really afraid and we hid behind the piano in my aunt's house. The Chicago riot was one of dozens of riots and confrontations that broke out across the U.S. from late spring to early autumn in 1919. It was known as Red Summer because of the unrelenting racial bloodshed. Tensions had been building amid the shift of southern blacks to northern cities as they fled life under Jim Crow during World War I and sought better opportunities. To this day, Chicago remains segregated. The north side is overwhelmingly white and Latino, while the city's south and west sides are majority black. It's two cities. When you go to certain places and certain parts of the city, you can feel the segregation. You can feel the separation. You can feel where you're not supposed to be. You can feel where everybody happy that you're there. The Newberry Library, an independent research library in Chicago, is putting on a series of public programming throughout the year to educate residents and mark the 100th anniversary of the riot. Acknowledging the past is a step one. Until we can get the history right, we're not going to be able to overcome our racial divides. Chicagoans are generally really good about our own history, but unfortunately the, the 1919 events have, um, I think, largely escaped people's understanding. Make some noise if you learned something you did not know about our city. Eve L. Ewing is a sociology professor at the University of Chicago and author of 1919, a collection of poems exploring the racist violence black Americans have endured before, during, and after the death of Eugene Williams. Little Eugene. Jean, Jean, sweetest I've seen, seen, seen. His mama told him, 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 them white boys mean, mean, mean. There's a strong case to be made that this is one of the most influential historical events, certainly of the last century, to have shaped the way our fabric, the fabric of our city operates now. Mitchell has seen how the city's changed and stayed the same over the last hundred years. Do you recall that? Yeah. Her daughter says that understanding what took place in the city's past is crucial to moving forward on matters of race today. Noreen Nasser, The Associated Press, Chicago.